Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Chromebook C425 from Asus. I love Chromebooks, and they let me borrow this for a couple days to check it out. Uh, this one will run you anywhere from $300 to $450, depending on configuration. And we're going to take a closer look at what you can do with this device here in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this did come in on loan from Asus. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a 14-inch laptop, 1080p. The display is IPS, so it's nice and sharp, but you will lose your image clarity when you go off-center. The viewing angles are not as good as I've seen on other IPS laptops, but some folks might prefer that because you do gain a little more privacy from people looking uh, to the side of the screen. Uh, but again, nonetheless, very sharp, consistent with other lower cost IPS displays that I've looked at. And uh, it's actually a little bit brighter than I expected too. So altogether, decent display on this one. Core M3 processor inside from Intel. This is an eighth generation 8100Y chip. That is fanless, so that means this device will not make any noise when it's running on your desk. Uh, this particular model came equipped with 8 gigabytes of RAM. There's a 4 gigabyte option available, and you also have the choice between a 64 gigabyte storage configuration or 128 gigabytes. And I think if you are in the market for a Chromebook just to do the basics, like web browsing and email, Go with the 4 gig RAM and 64 gigabyte storage option. You're not going to need much more than that. Uh, but if you are looking to start uh, doing more with your Chromebook, like Linux and Android apps, you'll probably want the greater storage and the larger amount of RAM to accommodate all of those activities. These devices are getting a lot more interesting because of the fact they run Android and Linux apps so well. And that's something to keep in mind when you're out shopping. But again, if you're just doing the basics, Go with the minimum, save yourself some money, and you'll be in good shape there. Now, the weight on this one is 2.8 pounds or 1.2 kilograms, so under 3 pounds, pretty lightweight. One thing to note, though, is that this is all plastic. It looks metal, but it's not. Uh, so if you are looking for a higher quality build that may not flex as much, uh, you'll probably want to go with their Chromebook Flip, which is just a little bit more expensive and has slightly better materials. Uh, this one is a traditional laptop design, so while the display can run flat here, it won't turn into a tablet like that flip version will do, and it's also not a touchscreen, so you'll be doing everything here uh, with the trackpad uh, down on the keyboard deck. Uh, the keyboard itself, though, is pretty nice, nice large keys. Uh, they're kind of raised pretty high to give the keys more travel. Uh, but I found it was pretty comfortable to type on it. Uh, one of the things that I found with Asus laptops from time to time is that their keys tend to be a little smaller. Uh, this one has nice full-size keys that follow some of the Google standards for how a keyboard should work on a Chromebook. I was very happy with the trackpad here. It's nice and big. It's a click pad. Seems to be pretty accurate and wasn't registering any uh, fa false clicks and that sort of thing. So I was pleased with the overall I.O. on this one. And the keyboard is backlit as well when you're in the dark. Uh, you've got a bunch of ports to look at on this one. There's a USB-C port here on the left-hand side. Uh, this will do data, power, and video. So it's a full-service USB port. The included charger plugs in here, but you could use a docking station or any other USB power source. And again, if you want to hook up an external monitor, you'll do it through the USB-C ports. Uh, this will support a 4K 60 Hertz display. Uh, so you've got some uh, desktop options with it as well. Uh, over here, you've got a USB 3 port, a full-size USB 3 port for plugging in keyboards, mice, and hard drives, and that sort of thing. Those can also get plugged into the USB-C port. You have a headphone jack over here. On the other side, you've got an SD card reader. So if you want to augment the onboard storage, you can pop in an SD card there. It will sit flush to the side of the laptop so you can have it in all the time. And there's another full-service USB-C port on the right-hand side. So you can plug in your power and display to either side that works best for you. So it was good to see Asus continuing their support for USB-C on these Chromebooks. I think they add a lot of flexibility. Now this Chromebook has an end of life date of June 2026. That means after that date, it no longer receives updates. We're going to start putting these dates on every review so that you're aware of when support ends for these. 
Uh, these computers stay relevant for a long time, so it's important to know uh, when that expiration date is, especially if you're looking at buying one of these in the future. After the date, the Chromebook still works, but it doesn't receive any additional software updates. So let's take a look now and see how the Chromebook performs. We'll start off here with the basics and work our way uh, through Android and Linux apps in a minute. But everything boots up here pretty quickly, as you can see. Very fast on rendering, very snappy and responsive. And I think for a web browsing device, which is its primary function, it seems to be doing all of those things quite well, even with multimedia rich sites like this. So that's a good thing. A little bit earlier, we tested its ability to play back higher end video. We've got a 4K 60 video here running on an external display. Uh, we did get a few drop frames at the outset. But once it got started, it was playing back fine with no additional drop frames. I also tested 1080p 60 video and experienced similar things there. So I think for video playback like Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime and some of the other services, this will do just fine. And of course, you can run the Android versions of those services on here as well and download videos for offline viewing too. So you have a lot of flexibility uh, with the Chromebook due to the fact that it has that uh, Android capability too. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 139.7 on version 1.0 of that test and 83.6 on version 2.0. And this score really surprised me because it put this device on par with some i5s we've looked at recently. And in addition to that, it was a lot faster than what we saw with the Pixelbook Go from Google that we reviewed just a few weeks ago that had the i5 version of this fanless Intel chip. That one should have been a lot faster and it wasn't. And in fact, we went back and tested the Pixelbook again just to make sure something didn't change in the Chrome OS operating system that may have optimized those benchmark results. It was still running about the same. So it's a really fast and zippy Chromebook here uh, based on what it has inside of it. Now, battery life on this one came in at around eight to 10 hours. We did turn the display brightness down slightly, but just did all the basics like email and web browsing and a few YouTube videos and we were able to pretty much get all day battery life out of this device, at least a full work day. But when you start running some Android games like this, uh, that of course will impact things more significantly. Also, if you start running some Linux apps that are more demanding on the processor, that will also eat into the battery life a bit more. We're gonna take a look now though at its Android performance. I've got PUBG here loading up. And once it is done compiling its resources, we'll take a look and see how this performs. All right, so here's PUBG running on the Chromebook here. And obviously it's not an ideal control situation given that we don't have a touch screen and the game really doesn't like to work with keyboard and mouse very well here, at least in how I have it currently configured. It's running okay. The problem though is that I'm finding a lot of these more demanding Android games crash quite a bit. Uh, on the Chromebook here. We also tried Call of Duty a little bit earlier. We couldn't really get that one to load at all. So if you are looking at this as something to play some of these higher end Android games, probably not the ideal platform. I don't think many Chromebooks are really at the moment. But there are a bunch of Android games that will run. In fact, most of the casual games shouldn't give you much of a problem. Uh, this is one of my favorites here, Pac-Man 256. Runs great, you can use the keyboard with it. A lot of similar games like this one are things that you shouldn't have too many crashes or other issues with. And of course, you'll have the Google Play Store available to you to install those apps. So if you've purchased Android apps in the past, uh, there's a good chance those apps will be available to you to install, again, through Google Play. Uh, you can also install things like Microsoft Word, but remember that is going to be the Android version of Microsoft Word not the Windows version. So there are some features that won't carry over. I did a video going into depth on this a little bit, which you can find down below in the video description to give you an update as to where Chromebooks are compared to Windows machines in uh, 2020. Uh, one other thing to note is that uh, some apps will be available both through the Chrome browser and through Android. So you can see here we have the Android version of YouTube along with the web-based version of YouTube. Uh, what Google is now doing is putting a little icon to indicate what is a browser-based app versus the Android app, so you can figure out exactly which one is which. Now, there are some other things, though, that you can do with Chromebooks now involving Linux. Let's take a look and see how it does with those. 
Now we've previously covered how to get Linux working on a Chromebook. Uh, you just jump into the settings and enable it and once you do you get your command line here and you can begin installing software. Uh, check out my video that I did on this to learn a little bit more about how you can navigate Linux on Chrome OS. Now I did install some software a little bit earlier so we've got LibreOffice here running with their spreadsheet. Again this is a Linux app running natively on this Chromebook and if I were to save this file right now it would save on the local storage. You can also shoehorn Steam on here. There's some rumors that uh, Google's going to support Steam more directly on Chrome OS in the future and I was able to uh, get Shovel Knight installed here. What I found with this though is that the Steam library kept locking up on me. This was not the best experience to get Steam working, although this morning it seems to be working a little bit better. Let's jump into Shovel Knight here and see how everything plays. I'll just start the game real quick and see how it runs. Now, one thing that Google has enabled just recently is GPU support in beta form. Uh, so that means it'll make use of the Intel graphics built into this chip so you can get better performance now out of Linux than you did before. But because it's in beta, it's going to be a bit iffy. But this game seems to be running pretty well here, about as well as it does on my Pixelbook Go. Uh, it seems to be hovering around 60 frames per second or thereabouts. And I think these are the kind of games you can expect to play on here. Uh, obviously, the more advanced games that would require a, an NVIDIA or an AMD GPU uh, certainly won't be decent here. But there are, again, games that are playable. A lot of the retro-inspired games like this one and it's pretty cool to be able to boot up your Steam library on a Chromebook and play a lot of games that are compatible with it. Now just remember though that this is the Linux version of Steam, so only the Linux compatible games will run on your Chromebook. The Windows only ones will not, but there are a lot of games that you likely have in your library that will run on here. Just remember you don't have a lot of graphical horsepower here to bring to bear on those games. Sound quality isn't bad on the laptop. You've got two downward firing speakers here. They will sound different depending on what surface the laptop is resting on, but I found the speakers to be quite loud and clear even though they don't have a wide range of sound. So if you want better bass and better music quality, obviously a pair of headphones will do better for that. So performance-wise, this is a very nice Chromebook. I was very surprised by how well it did on that benchmark. And of course, a benchmark doesn't tell the whole story, but I did find it to be very snappy and responsive on just regular web browsing, but also in Linux and on the Android apps. It feels faster than my Pixelbook Go does, and it shouldn't be faster given it has a slower processor, but nonetheless, it is performing quite nicely. Build quality here isn't great. It is all plastic, but it's pretty lightweight, and the performance, again, is something that I'm quite pleased with. I do think the, uh, the higher spec versions of this with the larger uh, storage and RAM are a little bit pricey, but I think if you can find one at a good price, I think you'll be pleased with the performance overall. So uh, not a bad Chromebook here from Asus. We'll try to get in a few more to see what else they've got uh, in their repertoire. And until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.